Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. And I just love collecting fruit trees. I just love somehow getting them, trading them, and so on. I got so many different uh, fruit trees in the ground and in pots. And it just I just love it. And I love when I meet other people collecting it as well. Well, in today's video, we're going to be at the Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council of Broward County. And this place is amazing. There's a lot of rare fruit clubs around the country, even here in Florida, but this place raises the bar. I mean, this amazing council has their own garden, a two and a half acre garden with amazing fruit trees. And twice a year, they have an amazing sale where not uh, vendors, but they themselves throughout the year collect these fruit trees and they sell them at these sales. And I just checked it out and I was like, wow, they have like everything I was looking for or people are looking for or asking for. This place is going to be, uh, you know, packed when they have this sale and all these sales. But uh, I'm posting this now. We're in April uh, 2023. But whenever you're seeing this, they have this sale twice a year uh, in April. And I believe there's one in the fall. But you can go to their website. And the amazing thing is it's only $35 to be a member of this this council and they have amazing uh, meetings online. Alex from Tropical Acres did it last month and they just have some amazing speakers. And as a member, you get all of that uh, all of, uh, on Zoom. They do it on Zoom. You don't even have to be in the area to join. So this place is truly amazing. And the interview was great. And Karam, who showed me around today, is uh, the, the coolest guy. He has his own amazing uh, fruit tree collection at his house, which we're going to film as well. But I was so excited to be at this place uh, in in South Florida and Southwest Acre uh, Ranches, Florida. And you will be too. You'll check it out. I'm so glad I had the camera. And remember, uh, don't miss their sale. Their sale, depending when you're watching this, is still a week away. It's next Saturday and Sunday. And then the following weekend as well on that Saturday. Uh, so... You have uh, three opportunities to get to the sale that's coming up to just see what they have. I love browsing at these sales. It's great. Uh, but check out their garden and what they're growing now. And here it is. I'm so here excited about today's meeting because I post a lot of videos about doing videos in, in people's yards. And if you have a yard and you want me to come out and check your yard out, contact me. I always say that. Well, I had a member uh, or a person contact me who's a member of the Broward uh, Vegetable and Tree Exotic Tree a rare treat club, a uh, fruit tree club. And we're going to interview him today, but uh, this is a very unique club because they have two and a half acre property with a bunch of fruit trees. And I, I also went to his house, which was wonderful, but uh, now we're going to visit the, the actual garden of the, of the club. And he's going to tell us all about it. If you want to be a member of this uh, organization, uh, I will uh, put the link below the video and, and, and click on that. But this is really part of the special thing for what I do. I get to meet great people and see their personal property, but then a gem like this always comes along and I'm so excited about this today. So here we go. All right, everybody. So here we are today, the Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council of Broward County. And this is a great information. If you want to contact them, there's their phone number and there's a website. There's their wonderful logo. And so they have this wonderful education research center. center which we're going to be heading in right now. We're in South Florida and Southwest Ranches, right? Correct. So we're going to be heading in there. This place looks amazing. So here we go. All right, this is Karam. And uh, Karam is the, did I say that right? Karim. Okay, this is Karam. Karam is one of the members of the council. And uh, tell us a little about the rare Fruit and Vegetable Council of Broward. Sure, sure. So we're a, kind of a unique garden club. We're not affiliated with the Rare Fruit Council International, which would be the one in Miami or the one in Palm Beach. We're independent from them. We were established in 1975. So we've been around almost 48 years. Um, we used to meet at the Extension Office and at a local park. And about 25 years ago, they purchased this property as a garden club. So we're one of the few garden clubs, if not the only garden club in Florida that actually owns land. We're a not-for-profit corporation. Uh, we uh, have a collection of fruit trees on this property. We started with a blank slate. And uh, at this time, we probably have over 350 fruit trees uh, on the property. It's a nice collection, kind of a mini fruit and spice park. And uh, we've got over 90 varieties of mangoes, 
some avocados and all kinds of weird fruit trees in between. Okay, so uh, what do you actually do here? Uh, who plants the trees and who maintains the garden? So we're 100% run uh, by volunteers. Uh, so you become a member of the Rotary Council and you can come out here and help out and you know learn. We have edu educational classes. We teach grafting, air layering, uh, and such here on the property, hands-on, right on the trees. Um, we have meetings once a month on Zoom where we bring in guest speakers. This past month we had Alex Salazar from uh, Mango Farm in Palm Beach. So we always have interesting speakers. We even, with Zoom, we were even able to bring in people from Australia and Hawaii, which we couldn't do in the past. So uh, this, this uh, COVID-19 situation really changed things for a lot of, a lot of us. Um, so we learn hands-on on the property Property is open only two days a week to our members, Wednesday mornings and Saturday mornings. And, um, and then we have activities, you know, we may be propagating, we may be uh, doing repairs. You know, a lot of us have different talents, engineers, carpenters, electricians. When you have a farm, there's always something to fix, to repair, to improve. So uh, we're always doing something aside from working the plants. So who does the maintaining of the pruning and uh, do you spray your trees here and we, how does that work? Uh, we do limited spraying on okay, you know, not every year we would spray for copper on the mangoes. It, everything takes time, right? And we're limited with our resources. So uh, pruning, we do a lot of our own pruning, uh, but if there are trees that are just beyond our reach, we'll bring in the experts to, uh, to, to bring them down. And how about watering? How do you trees get watered? We here? Uh, we uh, have most trees are established, so the the irrigation out on the property is actually turned off. We have irrigation for our greenhouse, for our sales plant area, and for our vegetable garden. So we are a rare fruit and vegetable. Great. And is uh, what do you do with the harvest of the fruit and? Uh, the vegetables? So the fruits that are uh, harvested are shared amongst. The participants so you help you can get some fruit we don't sell the fruits okay okay and i know you have a sale here twice a year and you got one coming up next week depending when you're watching this everybody right now it's uh coming up when's the date of the so the sale? uh the sales are actually a two weekend three date event it's april 29th and 30th and may 6th the following saturday kind of a rain day just in case okay so everybody uh 2023 2023 but if you're watching this another time check the number below and you can find out when the next sale is and your sale is it members bringing stuff in is it stuff from here what's that to so sale? that's a good question so we're a little again we're a little different than say the palm beach group where palm beach group brings in vendors that sell plants here we uh propagate a lot of our own plants we have a mist area we have a propagation area so i would say probably 20% of the plants that we sell are grown right here. The rest we buy from wholesalers. They're not here to sell their plants. We buy them, we grow them, we pot them up. Uh, so we, we gather plants from all over uh, South Florida. Is the sale open to just members or to the public? No, no, the sale is open to the public. As there's no admission fee. Uh, you can come. Uh, we open at 9.30 on Saturday. Usually there's a, there's a long line like there is in Palm Beach. Uh, people want to get the the nice stuff early on. And is there discounts for members? There is a discount. So when you become a member and you participate at the plant sale, you get 10% for one day, 20% for two days, and 25% for three days of Great. helping out. Well, we're going to look around this amazing property and we'll do our best to get back here for the sale and record that as well. Uh, so this was bought as empty property, a nonprofit. Who, de who designed and decided where, what's going to be where? Uh, some of the founding fathers actually all chipped in initially to, to buy the place. I think they bought it for about $70,000 back in the mid-1990s. Now it's worth more than a half a million dollars. Uh, they were reimbursed for their contribution over time. But, uh, but basically, uh, they had a, a plan. You know, there's a main building in the center, and there's a, there's a shade house. And then the layout was probably done as as you go kind of a thing and it's two and a half acres correct two and a half acres yes sir all right so show us around all right well right behind you is a very rare uh, philippine tamarind actually this tree right here uh 
can't find that anywhere. <laughs> wow. I know. I know. There's a cast guava next to it, which is a kind of a sour guava from Central America, um, from which uh, we uh, we can hair layer. In fact, there's some some small fruits right here. Cas guava, C A S. Uh, it's a rare fruit. Uh, we have regular guavas there, uh, moringas. Um, but let's walk this way. Bunch of trees here, and so how old are these trees in general? They vary. So the, we, since we got the property in the mid '90s, you know, the oldest tree would be about 25 years old. Um, but we have continued planting over time. So. What's the rarest tree that you have here, you would oh, say? Oh, gosh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, this, is, this one here is a big nay, which you really don't hear much about. Uh, it, produces, it produces a little berry that, uh, from which you can make, uh, from which you can make uh, a jelly, a, kind of like a grape jelly. Um, we don't really hear about this fruit. Bignay, B-I-G-N-A-Y. Wow. Okay. And I see a lot of mulch here. Yeah. So uh, we have arrangements with some of our local tree pruners who can dump their mulch here for free instead of paying to dump it at bushel stop. <laughs> so this area here. Uh, if you want to pan a little bit that way, it's one of the areas where we have a lot of mango trees. They're lined up like in two rows. Uh, we have collected some rare varieties over the years, like this one here. It's called Ex Extrema. Uh, the one uh, next to you, which has a couple of fruits, is the Kensington Pride, which is very popular in, in Australia. Australia. Yep, yep, yeah. Right? So this one's called Extrema. Extrema, yeah. I think it's somewhere from, I think it's from South America. Okay. Uh, here's the guava. You can recognize the bark. The guava tree, kind of an exfoliating bark. And the variety, most trees are tagged. So this one is a Hong Kong pink. Hong Kong pink. Wow, that's a big, big guava tree. Mm -hmm. Um, we got some mulberries. Here's some fruit. We can have a little taster, uh, Paul. Wow. You know what kind Looks of like this is? This is a, uh, it, look, it says giant, but it looks like uh, Shangri-La to me. Nice. It's about, a, about an inch. So, how close, these trees, look, these, most of the trees look spaced well, but these two trees look pretty close. Yeah, so, uh, actually this one right here is the Haitian uh, Madame Francis which is uh, amazing, uh, fibrous, but one of the most amazing flavors uh, out there. What we did is we had planted this Chacrochia, uh, which was donated to us by uh, uh, Fruitscapes on, on the uh, west coast of Florida as a gift. Uh, and uh, when we planted it, we knew that the, sh the Chacrochia would, would tower over it. So we, we didn't think there was an issue. And it, is, it is towering. <laughs> yeah. Make fruit. I uh, see here we have some more mulberries. I think we have an Oro Negro avocado here. The avocados need to be on higher ground. So we did build some berms uh, to plant the avocados. Southwest Ranch is a rather low lying town. Uh, it floods. And so um, we made arrangements to. Um, plant our avocados. They will die if they are submerged. Here is fruit. That's out of season, that one. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of odd. But that's a small that is or a negro. Uh, actually, this one is a Me winter Mexican. I winter that. Mexican, winter okay. Mexican. Does it say the date that they're planted? No, it does not. That's it, a winter it, it, it wasn't planted very long ago, maybe three, four years ago. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to recall. Winter Mexican. Let's go around this way. Watch it. So this year uh, we did an experiment 
called Grape Palette. You see if grapes would grow here in South Florida. They, they do, as you can see, well, the vine is, uh, is happy. It's coming out of dormancy. It does produce grapes. The uh, pitaya or dragon fruit. Dragon fruits like to grow uh, and uh, droop down to produce fruit. So we plant a post. Uh, with maybe a, um, a, a grate or trellis and let it droop back down, it'll produce the dragon fruit. That's a jackfruit right behind it. Oh, do you know what kind of jackfruit? I do not. We have, we probably have eight or nine varieties on the property. Okay. What's your favorite variety? I don't really have a favorite. I, I like the crunchy ones in general and, uh, I uh, that I have one in particular that I, that I like over others. So it looks like we still have a few fruits, thank God, for all these storms we've gotten. What is this? A few fruits. This one is a hatcher. Okay, hatcher, wow. which is a variety that came yep. out of, uh, was it Boynton Beach, Boynton Beach or yes. Lantana? Mm -hmm. Well, Lantana, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the hatcher family. It's a large fruit, well known. No. An old variety. This one is a Batiste, which is a Haitian variety. Yes. Now, for so those that are asking, why is a tree like this color? And it's just some lichen, you know, that's around there. It's not really a disease. It's just a, a you know, vegetative, you know, growth on the tree. I, I, I'm not a proponent of spraying too much anyway. Okay. But. I gotta kill the tree. One here, and they've been pruned quite a bit. You can see this one is a Stephen. You a Stephen. A Stephen. No, I haven't really heard of it. So again, an older variety. Um, you know, then we have some of the New York Zill varieties intertwined in here. This is a sunrise. A oh, sunrise. That's excellent. Have you had the sunrise? Lemon. Lemon zest? Lemon Saigon. Lemon Saigon, okay. Saigon. Have you had the sunrise? I have. It's kind of a large fruit. Yeah. Um, sometimes large fruits tend to be more mushy or watery. I mean, it definitely gives you a lot of, you know, fruit. This is our berm, like for the avocados I was talking about. So we raised with some soil God, and mulch yeah. and basically raised Maybe three feet off the, the, the general grade. grade. Yeah, I like the sunrise a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a sun, so these are your avocados. Yeah, you so raise it up here. Okay. Okay. So when it floods, there's not no worries here because correct. Good, good. And this is huge. This yeah, is so this is a caimito. Wow. You can wow. see the uh, caimito is in the satin leaf family, which is a native. It has an uh, the underside of the leaf is a copper color. Satin leaf. Uh, Caimito is a fruit from Hispaniola and uh, it's a purple fruit. When you cut it on the inside, it looks like a star. They also call it star apple. That's a common name. Not star fruit, star apple. Amazing. This is the biggest yeah. one I've seen. It's huge. It actually fell down. Uh, I think it was with Hurricane Irma. We righted it up and it came right back. Wow. It, to trim it way, way back. Actually, where you're standing, there was a green Caimito and we lost it. Actually, oh, wow. idea. And is this loaded when it's in season? It did give quite a lot of fruit. Uh, I wonder if there are any fruits left. Uh, the season is, is winter time. Uh, uh, there's a random fruit right there. It's, oh, about, there's the, it's about the size of a small baseball. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that is huge. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, let me, people don't, wow, well, can, can't understand how big they can get. Wow. That's, that's, that's very true. How and, old is this tree? Uh, I would say it's probably 15, 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of these trees, you know, people want to get, they have to be mindful of what the mature size is of them. You know, for example, a black sapote fruit tree, which is a chocolate pudding fruit. You'll see one back there. It's, as big as this. It gets huge. Wow. Yeah. We have a few uh, loquats here. This is 
something on the rare side. You play cinnamon. 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 So as you know, cinnamon, you harvest the bark. It also produces a berry. Do the leaves taste like cinnamon? No. no. <laughs> uh, next to it is uh, a, a nice sapodilla. We have a few sapodillas on the property. I am not sure what the variety is on this particular one. It's, a, it's actually a very good one. I've had it. Uh, so it's not ready yet, but you see it has... Actually, this one is close. It has fruit. So how are you showing if it's ready? How so you would scrape the bark, or the uh, skin, and if it shows a little bit of brownish color underneath, it would be ready. This one is still showing green. Got you. So I'll wait a little longer, but it already has new growth new growth for the next harvest. And based on variety, out. these can grow all year pretty much, yes, mostly the winter. Yes. Now, do you know what variety this is? No, I don't. Actually, this is one of them. No, do you have a pocket knife? No, I don't. Gosh. Oh, right on the floor, look at that. Voila. Look at that, we'll find out <laughs> what variety. Here. That's amazing. Good food. Wow. Excellent. Good breakfast. Thanks. There you go. All right. So that was worth the trip. <laughs> this is really important and a great club. Uh, can people be members if they don't live out here in South Florida? Absolutely. So we have members uh, that live out of state. Uh, they um, they join to get our newsletters. They join to uh, be able to zoom into our meetings, which is definitely a benefit of you know of Zoom nowadays, right? So in the back in the day, you would really have to be present to attend to our meetings and um, the classes that we teach though we don't really put them on zoom they're more hands-on in person so now what about if you're not a member can you is there a way you can pay to see some of the classes uh basically we ask people to, to pay the membership fee which is 35 bucks so. a year yeah okay well i was saying it's great to see these mature trees, to get an idea how they grow, not just the size, but also how they grow. And if you see here, everybody, if you don't cut the trees short, they grow up. If you cut them short, they grow wide. So you could fit these trees in smaller spaces. Then this tree here is not too wide. It's growing up. Right behind there. you, literally um, above your head, is a mame. I was just looking at that with a lot of ripe fruit on it. Mm -hmm. And an amazing size mame. This is like, it looks like, Almost a mini mame because they grow so much bigger than this normally uh, before they fruit. And so this one was definitely top work. But uh, look at this. Look at this fruit. This looks like a Key West Pantane one, possibly. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Let's and see. look at that. And it's pretty There's close. A sign and we here. put a sign because we have sometimes issues with people picking fruit when they're not ready, right? Yes. And so we have to educate people. Wow. So that is a great example here. Let's see what variety this is. Oh no, that's the... Oh, uh, it's got a question mark, unknown, looks like. Unknown, because that is uh, really amazing. The size of it, that's a great example. And Mame is just a wonderful fruit, looking very nice. So actually, when I turn around, I'm gonna go this way. We have some beehives back here. Great. I'm not too close, but I want to show them for the benefit of the, uh, of the group. Uh, along the way, but although this is a Philippine mango. Philippine mango. There's another jackfruit. All right, we have a kind of a jackfruit collection in here. Looks like a noni. There's a jackfruit hanging on the tree. Yes, give you an yes, example. Yes, yes. Here's another example of how skinny these trees can grow. Definitely. So this, this is actually a, uh, I don't know what the variety, but this, this is a known, a good known variety. Though this one over next to it though was a seedling. It's actually very prolific, but the fruit is really of poor quality. Oh. So a good example here of, you know, purchasing a, a grafted tree as opposed to a seedling. Hundred percent, especially. Uh, you don't want surprises later on. Right, right. So back here is where we have our our bees that look happy. We're passing by it several uh, mangoes. Actually, let's take a quick look over here before we head to the air bees. layering. Something. This is here. air layering. This is a peanut butter fruit tree. Okay. So uh, 
So this was air layered. And the date on here is February 11th. And the, the person's initials are on here. So um, as part of the club, we, if people are gonna air layer, we ask that they air layer for the club and they can take one home. Now, peanut butter fruit grows so well from seed. Why, I mean, is air layer just for educational purposes? You're gonna get there... well, uh, both. You're gonna get a, a mature tree a lot quicker. You, you will when you air layer? Pardon? When you air layer, you'll get it. Yeah, much... I mean, you're already gonna have a tree that's got branches got on you. it, right? As opposed to it growing slowly. Now, when you air layer, is the root system weaker than if you grow from a seed or not necessarily? I, I've heard that mentioned, but I, I don't know if it's really been proven. Okay. And you wouldn't want to air layer everything like a mango, you'd rather graft than air Correct. layer. Correct. There, there are many plants that we teach our members that can be air layered. For example, lychees, longans, jujubes. Ju uh, jujubes are usually grafted. Okay. Uh, guavas, cacao can be seed or air layered. Uh, all the syzygiums, which would be the wax jambu, malay apple, and uh, rose apple can be air layered. Uh, the ones that should be grafted would be jackfruit, mangoes, avocados, sapadillas, mames, to name a few. All righty. All right. Go back this way. There's the beehives like over there. We have about eight or ten boxes there. We have one of our members is a beekeeper. Um, his name is Ulrich. He's from Trinidad. And uh, beetles are huge. <laughs> so we uh, harvest our own honey and we sell our own honey at our plant sale. So this is true local honey. Literally, you, when you buy it, it came from about 200 feet away. <laughs> now, what uh, what will be better uh, for the fertilizing the trees or, or spreading the pollen, bees or flies? Or it really depends. I mean, bees will pollinate certain things, but not nearly as much as flies would. Okay. Yeah, different kinds of flies, sure. not the house fly, but sure. Yeah. There's a little bit of a misnomer that bees will pollinate fruit trees. It's been proven that's not actually a fact. So they will, but not as good as right. certain flies. Right. Now, why do you say not the house fly? The house fly won't pollinate them? Well, they're not as prolific, but the gnats, little gnats, which we, I guess I would call those flies, but gnats, little flying bugs are the ones that really will pollinate. In fact, they say that if you hang a uh, bag with some spoiled fruit, on a tree, it will attract the gnats, and the gnats will be in the area, and it will help pollinate whatever fruit tree you are hanging that on. So here we have a kind of our collection of uh, longans. We have, I think, five or six longans. This one is a Diamond River, which is a late variety. This here is a very large Jabodicaba vexator, wow. which is a blue grape or false Jabaricaba. I'm looking to see if there are any fruits on it. We have two of them on the property. The large one. Actually, it's got some flowers right here. But it'll produce thousands of Jabaricaba sized fruit. A little bit more astringent. It's more of an astringent fruit. Um, Jabaricaba is a sweet fruit. There's a tag on here, and we're passing it, so I might as well check. Yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> this is, uh, is a tiger eye or something? Uh, I don't know, a Sari shampoo? shampoo? Oh, shampoo. Sari shampoo, that's the shampoo. Hawaiian variety. Yeah. Sari shampoo, yep. Right. Here's our um, Ma Chinook. Ma, Ma Chinook. Chinook is a, a, an elongated fruit, I think also known as a banana. Mango. Everyone loves that one. Yes. Uh, it tends to be leggy. This one is very, <laughs> very leggy. This guy here has a little fruit on it. Uh, 
Oh, uh, Torbit. 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 Alrighty. Now, what's those big trees? Is that somebody else's property? Yeah, so that's the back fence, and there's another okay. parcel behind us. Do you have a problem with anyone coming in here that's not members? Like, no. Uh, we had one instance where our breadfruit all disappeared overnight. Uh, yeah, no mosquitoes are horrible. I know. Yeah. Carambola is more younger mangoes that we recently planted. These are all our longans here. So this is the back side of the property. This is a this is a regular bay rum. Good size. Good size tree. This is spice plant. This is an allspice. Uh, here's a nice flower on the allspice. In fact, it looks like there's something there. And here is a lemon baron. Look at the size of this guy. It's got wow. almost two feet across. Wow. Yep. Lemon baron. So going in that direction is a, just a bunch of more mangoes and stuff with the. And how many mangoes did you say they have uh, on the property? I think uh, around 90 varieties. Now I see a bunch of potted plants here. Yeah, so these were uh, we're saving those specimen to plant. We may okay. remove a couple of ones and replace them with some of these. Who makes that decision? Uh, we have a property manager who's also a volunteer, and he makes a lot of those decisions. So there's not a committee, there's the one... Not for everything, otherwise it's just committee committees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got safety committee, there's, there's a uh, um, macadamia, this is a Dana White. Uh, nice, really bad. This is our vegetable, this, okay, here, let's go over here. This is our educational building. This is the screen building where we have our classes. There's our school bell. <laughs> Alrighty, so the tables have been folded up, and we lay out a bunch of tables. We have a board, lights, and ceiling fans, and we also have a little bit of a kitchen here, and we have water for our volunteers. Meetings in the winter, not some. <laughs> well, yeah. It's hot in there. It is. It is. I know we don't have it. And uh, right over here is our vegetable area. Well, wow, yes, yeah, this is a rat fruit and a tree and vegetable club. So they also, right. and it's important to learn how to grow vegetables. So Correct. they teach them so here as well. you got your winter vegetables and you got your summer vegetables. So we reserved this area. And over the years, it's changed. You know, we built some raised beds. The beds rotted away. Last year, we built these cages to protect the, the vegetables from the iguanas. Yeah, how are the animals out here with the fruit trees? That there are some raccoons, there are some iguanas, cats, birds. Birds love our lychees. You see the lychees up there? Yeah. Uh, that is a sweet sensation. Not sweetheart, sweet sensation. There's a sweetheart on that side. So right now it doesn't look like there's much going on. It looks like the winter vegetables just finished. There's some what a great hard, idea though for the cage. Charred, some tomatoes idea. here. Some um, root vegetables. And do you have a well here? I see it's water. We do. So we have a well. That's how our plants are irrigated. Now, this is something rare. Um, I want to get the right to the name correctly. This is guarana. Guarana is the Brazilian fruit that uh, from which they make a caffeine drink. And so um, this, these are the flowers. They will turn into a, an amazing looking little reddish fruit that actually looks like a miniature aki. Oh, it's wow. got little black eyes like an aki. It opens up. Wow. Um, so. It goes into a vine. That's definitely a rare plant. And next to it is carob, which is the... Oh, I didn't know that grows out here. Yeah, so it's a fake uh, chocolate. Does it grow out here? Uh, yes, but it, uh, it needs a male and a female. Okay. So we have a layered it. Uh, there's some... Uh, Do you have a male and a female right next to each other? No, I think this is... Okay. We need to acquire another one. But here's some of it growing. 
Okay, so it looks like we may have gotten wow. a pod. Nice. Um, pigeon pea right here. Yep. So that's a vegetable. <laughs> so some Caribbean vegetables, you know. Um, we even salvaged a couple of hot tubs and converted them into our aquatic uh, ponds. And the other one, actually, we planted spices in it. And there's a big <laughs> pond back there, too. There is. That is. a man-made pond? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, and then, actually, normally we have the fountain running. That's why you got all the mosquitoes. I know, I know. Look at the pond. Um, back here. So many mango trees, everybody. We're almost into mango season, and yes, it's so yes. impressive. A lot there's of so rare mangoes. In fact, we have one of, the, one of our rarer mangoes. is a uh, mango uh, uh, odorata. Yes, which smells is, great. Which has got an <laughs> unusual, uh, it's one of these two, I can't remember which. It's more round. Yeah, it must be this one. Yeah. We had one last year, it smelled interesting. Yes, I know. And if you go back this way, kind of the center of the property, we just acquired this uh, prefab shed for our beekeeper. So our beekeeper okay. will be able to process and extract the, the honey in here rather than do it at his residence it's locked actually right now but um it's got the extractor in there and equipment and we can do it you know in a sure in a controlled environment and this steel building here which looks like it could withstand an atomic bomb <laughs> it's our bathroom it's, we call it Shays, Shays shack it's actually a structure we acquired from canada Assembled it. It's shaped to withstand, I guess, snow, snowy events, but in our case, hurricanes. Interesting. This is our potting area. We pot, we soil, and this is our shade house. We have a mist area in here where we grow all kinds of stuff. This kind wow. Of water comes Beautiful. on a lot of plants. And uh, let's just walk straight across. Beautiful. Straight across this way. So this is one of our sales area. Actually, it's kind of our overflow for the plant sale. We've got a lot. Well, of... I see white sapote here. Yeah. So what kind of varieties do you have in white sapote? Uh, I think we have Sue Bell and uh, probably the um, the South Florida variety, the Redland. Yeah. Wow. Redland. Beautiful. We got rose apple that we air layered ourselves. Uh, we got some guavas in here. Goju berries. Gojis that have got fruit on them and flowers. Beautiful little red berry. There's canna steel, um, there's jackfruit. You got everything. This sale's going to be amazing, everybody. Yeah, we always have an idea. These are uh, a, a grenadilla that we've propagated oh, wow. ourselves. Wow, grenadilla is mm -hmm. great. Different avocados. We have, this is kind of a little, some surplus. We have 30 varieties of avocados available at our sale. 30 varieties. And wow. 50 varieties of mangoes. Wow. There's a uh, raspberry, which a lot of people don't realize will grow here. This is a special raspberry. It's called the Mysore raspberry. Let's go back this way. We have some bananas on the property, a lot of different varieties. These are kind of a dwarf variety. Okay. Oh, this is actually pretty neat here. This is a Otahiti gooseberry. Oh, that's it's how they a grow. Fruit that uh, is popular in the Caribbean. We have that available at our plant sale. Those aren't we are layer our own right? trees. They're not ripe yet, right? Uh, you can probably try one. Yeah. If they're ripe. Yeah, I mean, it's a sour fruit, so let's grab one of the bigger ones. They're on the harder side. Does that mean they're not ripe? They're going to be crunchy. Okay, let will try a gooseberry. Now, I don't know if you know this, gooseberries are supposed to have vitamin B12. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. A lot of our they trees are. are large trees. You know, people go to various Very sour. plant sales and will buy a can of stale that's okay, two feet tall. We have those, but we have some that are 10 feet tall. So these are all part of the sale? Yes, so this is our main sale area here. Actually, here's a, as we walk through, here's a Katie jackfruit which was named after um, Dr. Matt Snow's daughter. It's an excellent variety. Oh, you sell those here too? Uh, we need to propagate it. 
We have uh, three uh, large IBUs on the property. You can see one of them here. Oh, IBU. Check that out. Uh, I understand there may be some. Yeah, IBUs are great fruits. Are you going to be selling those at the we sale are, as well? We are. We've got a nice selection of IBUs. Uh, more air layers of bar cherries. Yeah, uh, they got Malay apple as well here for the sale. Yes. Malay apple. This is our main area. The way we've got it laid out, it's kind of like Cat Publix. We've got the signs in the end of the row telling you what's down the row. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and of course, our volunteers will. So let's look. Let's see. So the, so the sale, people are going to walk out here, take what they want, yeah, so, and then pay. Right. right. And then we have volunteers that will you know, guide them and explain to them the different varieties and any okay. questions they may have. And here you got your mangoes. So you see A through L. And then over here, we have, I think, L through Z. <laughs> wow. Okay. Then you got and some. a lot of our mangoes have fruits on them. Oh, wow. So you they are buy. Uh, a lot of them have uh, flowers. Now, when you walk through, are the prices on here? Or are yeah, they so all... They're all, yeah, they're all tagged. So they all have a white tag. It'll say what the variety is. Mango cultivar Malika, for example. And the price on the back side. So how much is a tree that size? What we just uh, saw on a tag. That one was $78. Okay, and that's a big tree. That's a good sized tree. That's, and I, that's and, a great deal, actually. And here's a tiny Neelum, but look, it's got flowers. Oh, wow. So that's the proof, you know, you know the grafted plants uh, mimic really the parent tree. They think it's a mature tree, so it's already flowering, and that plant is no more than 15 inches tall. Wow. Of course, it's not going to hold the fruit, but the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These are our avocados here. Uh, Many of them are flowering or are holding fruit. So like after the sale, is this place empty or is no, it? No, uh, we usually sell about, about half of what's on okay. here. There's some avocados on, a, on an avocado tree. That is a Donnie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a big tree. What's this here? East Indian. East Indian, wow. wow. Over there, very interesting, uh, Michelia, uh, Michelia alba. You see the flower? Yeah. So we have a couple of flowering plants, the Michelia and the, um, uh, the Ylang Ylang. They do produce an oil that is, you know, not consumable, but is used, uh, you know, to make perfume. Yeah, they're beautiful. But uh, everything else, though, that we sell. This one has are, some fruit on it, fruits and actually. spices. Yep. There's a nice little... Reddish fruit. Let's see what that one is. Uh, dwarf Hawaiian. There wow. you go. Wow, look at that. Nice little fruit. Anyways, um, this is going to be a great sale, everybody. Wow. So yeah, a lot of fruit, a lot of plants with fruits on them. And let's go to the other side here. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a, a club worth being a member because the meetings alone, they just had Alex from Tropical Acres as a guest speaker. And they, I'm sure they have other great speakers. And here, look, you have custard apple, everybody. Check custard, that out. And charlotte, too. Wow. Charlotte and all the varieties of avocados. We have 30 varieties of avocados. Everybody, get this variety. This is, have you tasted this? I have not. Amazing. Campong. Campong. Wow. It's a kind of roundish fruit, oh, right? Yeah. It's great. And we have several of those. Uh, Utuado is a good variety for kind of a small yard. Yeah. Uh, these are some more avocados here. Um, Campong. Nishikawa is an excellent variety from uh, Hawaii. That's great. It's like a yep. supermarket of fruit trees. Yep. And the warts at the very bottom, which is a dwarf variety. Yes. And we have jackfruits here. We have Can you take of... us to the... So somebody would see this. Take us to the custard apple. I want to yeah, see yeah. what you guys got. Yeah, sure. So... Now, I know you have it two weekends uh, in a row. Like after the first day, is there like a lot of the best stuff going or not necessarily? I mean, some of the rarer stuff will be gone, but we still would have quite a bit for the second day. And the third day, uh, maybe a little bit more slim pickings, but there's still some stuff. So the Anonas are here. Uh, Relinia. Oh, they got Relinia. That's nice. 
Now, are all the anonas, are they all grafted or some from seeds? Some are from seeds, some are grafted. So here are the custard apples, some custard apple, and a lot of them are just pu pushing new growth because yes. they, they can't coming out of dormancy. Do you know have, have different varieties? Uh, we have the San Pablo, which is the red variety. Yeah. And I think we have a white variety as well. Here's the Chirilatas. Chirilatas, wow. Painter's red. And we have, I think, a couple of Ilamas as well. Here's some Imbis. Wow. Uh, Achacha. On the, um, uh, the June plums, we have the dwarf and the giant. So, uh, the dwarf has been promoted a lot in recent years. The giant kind of fallen out of you know, being popular, but we've, we're trying to bring it back. People that have large yards should consider a large. And remember everybody that's watching this right now, even though the sale is next week, they have it twice a year. So if you're watching this video after the sale. All right, our next one will be in October. In October, so every uh, eight, uh, April, April and October. April and October, correct. Great. Passion fruits, we have the yellows and the purple possum. So if you're getting a, a passion fruit, the purple possum is self-pollinating. So you're fine with one, but if you get the yellow, you really need to get another one because the yellow is not self-pollinating. Important to know. The gel body cabas on this on the back side here, we have the red, the, the sabara, and the yellow, which oh, is wow. the yellow is the rare one. Sapodillas. Mostly smallish one, a lot of bananas, even bearings. <laughs> bananas. Here's the cast guava we were talking about when we first started. Yeah. We have that here. And uh, let's go this way real quick. Now we'll conclude our tour on some of the uh, nice specimen. We have a nice breadfruit on the property. This is a cinnamon apple, which is a very rare one. Puteria hypoglauca. It's a fruit that looks similar to a, a, a um, kind of like a mame, but it's it's got a cinnamony flavor to it. Now I haven't seen so far two of my favorites. Uh, White support day. Do, do we do we have we, one? Uh, we uh, actually have right here. Let's see. We had planted one back here somewhere. Okay, we'll run along, run right. into it along this the way. This is the breadfruit. Uh, wow, look at that big breadfruit. Wow. And did you get fruit off it? We have had uh, the past two three years. You know, a couple dozen fruits on. Wow. We are pretty far out west, and they are known to be not very cold tolerant, but we haven't really had very cold winters. It's been in the ground, I want to say about 10 years. Very nice. We very, air very layer beautiful. it, then we also uh, do root cuttings. Like this one, this baby there could be a prune. Nice. My other one is a uh, persimmon. You have that in the ground? No, uh, actually, yeah, we do in the front. Oh, nice. We do. We nice. Do. So there's a bunch yeah. of more mangoes back so, oh, there. Oh, yeah. So uh, here's their, these are the syzygiums. Look how, how big they are. What are they? Uh, the uh, syzygiums. So the Malay apple. This is the okay. Malay apple wow. here. Wow. Wax chamber. We have the red and the white. And the mango tree. These are probably 20. Now, the wax shampoo will give more fruit than any other tree here, I bet. Uh, it does, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a lot of fruit. You can see. Yeah. This is our black sapote right here. Wow. I was telling you earlier. It's, uh, well, it's about 25 feet. Wow. Yeah. This is a uh, Hawaiian dwarf. And then back here, actually, it's worth going this way. Side. We have a Duncan, a Julie. Like a Julie right here. It's got a very look at that Julie. Wow. Julie has a distinct flourish. Wow, that's a pattern. fruiting Judy. Julie. 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 I'm going to say maybe Neilan. 
Healer. Now, what do they got going on next door here? Then? So, uh, this is a, kind of a rodeo training grounds. Okay, do you get any of the uh, compost and manure from there? Or no? We don't. We don't. Okay. Now, yeah. if you had a choice, would you or you tend to stay away from that here? Uh, we have gotten some horse manure in the past that we've allowed to to cook, you know, before we used it. Uh, just got to be careful with uh, some of the medicine that these animals may be yeah. putting out in their excrements. So, yeah, I'd rather just go with mulch. Wood chips, yep. 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 All right, well, this property is amazing, and uh, this club is amazing. Yeah, here's some uh, um, hog plum. Yeah, look at that, wow. There's their little red flower and fruit. It's popular fruit uh, in the it's Caribbean. It's delicious, yeah. Mm -hmm. delicious. We have some sugar cane that we, oh, we usually juice some of the, some of the cane at the, at the sale. Sure. Well, thank you so much. And tell everybody the website. I'll put it below the link, the link below as yeah, well. Yeah, so www.rfvcbroward.org. I'll put your Facebook and your website below the video and thank your you. phone number. Thank you, Paul. And turn to your back here. Let's see the logo. Turn around. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> there's there's been, a, there's been the sun right here. Yeah, there's the logo. All right. If you become a member, do you get a shirt? I know you got to purchase. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. All yeah, right. Yeah. This place is uh, wonderful. Thank you for showing us around. Thanks for uh, coming out and uh, videotaping us. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right, everybody. I am telling you, as I was walking through Antino's trees, I just wanted to buy everything right there and then. And I just don't have the room. But I'm going to be at the sale. I'm going to try to get there and, and film all the people that are coming. So you'll get to meet me if you're there. I'll be there on a, next Sunday uh, if you're around. Uh, Saturday or Sunday, come by and stop by. And if you missed this sale, whenever you're seeing this video, maybe you've seen it later, they have the sale twice a year. They have it in the spring and they also have it in the fall. So I'm going to put their website link and their Facebook page below the video here. You can contact them. Remember, I think this is a great opportunity to join such an inexpensive price uh, and go check out that garden. It's open twice a week. So, and the members get the fruit. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, thank you uh, to the Rare Fruit and, and, and vegetable, they're not just fruits, they're doing vegetables as well. They have amazing garden and vegetables, a really cool place. So uh, check them out. And until then, everybody, please comment the questions below and like this video and share with others and subscribe if you wanna be updated when I'm gonna be new, doing new videos. Until then, everybody have a great day and keep growing.